Hey guys, welcome back, USA to Philippines Life channel. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Helps the channel out a lot. We're doing pretty good. Today we're going to talk about first timers traveling abroad. How to do it. Maybe you've never done it before. You're a single guy, middle aged. And uh, I'm going to, I was that guy and I'm going to share with you how I did it and uh, hopefully make it easier for you uh, to do it as well. So stick around, that's what we're gonna talk about today. All right, all right, so here we go. Welcome back, USA to Philippines Life Channel. So traveling abroad for the first time, uh, maybe you're like me, um, went through uh, a, a marriage, you're in your middle age, marriage failed, you're uh, staring down retirement years uh, in the not too distant future, uh, you're looking to meet a lady online overseas, uh, plenty of options, doesn't necessarily have to be the Philippines, you know, there's great, great ladies in other countries too. Um, so, but traveling abroad, uh, that was a big hurdle for me. Um, I had never done it before. I was a homebody, uh, worked local. Um, you know, my, my first marriage, more or less like a childhood sweetheart, local girl, local guy, 25 years just working and doing the family thing. Uh, we didn't do much traveling. We never went out of the country. Um, so here I was in my late 40s. Uh, I meet my uh, fiance, future wife online. Uh, now I got to get there. Um, I will tell you that I didn't think about that at first when I first set out um, on the online dating uh, game. Uh, I shouldn't call it a game, but... Um, I didn't think about the travel part. I just went out there and tried to meet somebody. And uh, I guess all the stars have to line up for you when you meet that right person for you. Uh, and that includes financially. I mean, you have to be financially ready to make this move. Uh, and I will say that if you're the type of guy that's going online, meeting these girls, um, and then just chatting with them for two, three, four, five years and not going and making a commitment to go there and meet them. I mean, that's, that's, you know, not really a good thing to do. Uh, cause they're, they're looking to meet somebody and they want to start a family, start a life. Um, you know, uh, and that happens a lot. And these girls get strung along for a long time. And I know we talk about, you know, the Filipinas, scammers, uh, the online international dating scammers, the girls, but the guys do it too. Um, yeah, and sometimes, sometimes it's, uh, the girls, but they're really guys on the other end pretending they're girls, uh, scamming guys. So, you know, there's a lot of that. So you got, you got to get through all that. But getting back to what we're talking about, uh, just, First thing you got to do if you've never traveled on uh, traveled internationally, you need to, if you don't have one, you need to get a passport. And if you've never done that before, you may not know where to start, and it may seem like uh, it may seem like a uh, uh, big daunting task. Um, I would suggest what I did is I went to the local. Uh, I went online. Uh, first, I talked to my local post office. They did not do it there. They mo Some post offices do have passport services, not all. So if you go to your local post office, they will be able to direct you to the closest. And I would suggest the full service passport um, deal at a post office. Uh, I did that. It was great. It was close by. I went there. Um, oddly enough, the gentleman who helped me was Filipino. <laughs> so we had a great time. He took my photo. He did everything. Um, and within a matter of weeks, 
Uh, I think it was three or four weeks. I got my package in the mail with my passport and I was ready to go. Um, so it's, it's probably, I don't have the exact figure in front of me, but it's maybe $125, something like that. It's, it's really not a lot of money, but just make sure you have your, your, uh, your birth certificate is up to date because I know my, my birth certificate was the old style. I was born in the late sixties. So it was an old hat. You have to up, upgrade it. You got to go to your County where you were born, uh, and get an upgraded, um, birth certificate. I had to do that. Luckily I was able to do all that the same day. I had taken a day off of work to do it and I got it all done in one day. Okay. Now you do that you get the passport then it's just a matter of you know booking the flight and i would suggest my first time doing this i went i have a, a good friend co-worker um his he's filipino uh and his dad was a travel agent and uh he i went to see him and he was awesome he arranged the whole trip for me um but i would say you don't have to do that you do not have to do that. Um, you, I would suggest just using something like Expedia, Travelocity, uh, one of those. Uh, it's very simple. You go on, and if you've never used it before, you just go on, you book your destination, you look for the dates. The nice thing about this is you can include the hotel, and you pay one price. Everything's paid for. Uh, you get your confirmation. Uh, all the email, the itinerary, everything's there. And then you just make sure you're at the airport when they tell you to be there. Not, don't do like me. And, and, you know, because it, it's an early morning flight, you know, I missed, I screwed up. And if you go back to my video, uh, I messed up big time. You'll hear that story. It was pretty crazy, but, uh, we survived that. Uh, it ended up costing me a little extra money, but uh, I got through it. But, don't let that happen to you. Pay, you know, really examine your, your times. But, uh, we, we use Expedia a lot. Uh, we, I know we did last time on our last trip and, uh, it was wonderful. Everything was paid for. Uh, we arrived, uh, and all, not only the international flights, but if you're going to a province, um, you know, if you're not on the, if you're going to, and I'm talking Philippines, and I, I have no experience with the other countries, but I assume it works the same way. If you are going to the Philippines and if your girlfriend, um, does not live on the main island, Luzon, where Manila is, you'll, you'll most like, you'll, no, you'll most likely, you will have to take a domestic flight, uh, to whatever island that she's on. In our case, it was, uh, Iloilo, Panay. Um, and it was an hour flight. Um, and, uh, the, it, those flights, domestic flights in the Philippines, they run like, it's like a bus service. It really is. So once you go through immigration and all that with, uh, getting there from your international flight, um, you just go, uh, see if you have to collect your baggage. Uh, most of the time, and this is another reason why I like using Expedia, uh, a lot of times uh, they will tell you you have to collect your baggage and recheck it or it's going to be uh, checked in for you to your um, your connecting flight. Uh, so that makes it a lot easier. Also, uh, I had a call uh, the last trip we made. They changed the uh, couple of the flight had to be changed. No, I think it was the seating or something. I had a call the Expedia call center and it was funny because it ended up, they wouldn't tell me that it was in the Philippines, but I could tell that I was talking to a Filipina on the phone, uh, from Expedia. That was pretty cool, but she was great. She helped me out, whatever it was. Uh, I think it was a seat assignment or something. Uh, but we, uh, took care of it and, uh, no, no extra cost. Uh, it was great. Um, and the other thing that was nice about all of that, doing it online was it all, through my phone, like automatically knew that I had a flight and everything. So flight, you know, getting close to flight day, my, um, uh, Google was giving me, uh, alerts telling me that I had a flight and all that. And, uh, while I was traveling, Google was alerting me and telling me, you know, your flight leaves in this many times and that many times, uh, that this time, that time. So that was kind of cool too. Um, but yeah, I would, I would suggest 
using a service like that for your first time. Now, if once you do that, you can save a lot of money. And even if you're looking to save money, you can just, if you have to go somewhere besides Manila, if you need to fly to, let's uh, say, uh, Mindanao or, uh, you know, some other island, if you got to stop through Cebu or Manila first, uh, if you're good at it, you can book your flight direct from the U.S., um, you know, to Manila. And you probably have to stop in Hong Kong or uh, Tokyo or South Korea uh, unless you're doing Philippine Airlines flight, then you can get direct from, um, you know, uh, your flight, your your origin location in the U.S. Um, then, um, you know, then you're okay. But uh, if not, then uh, you can just book the flight to Manila and then do another booking. Uh, just give yourself time, though, if you're going to book the if you're going to piecemeal it and, and book your flight to Manila and then book your flight from Manila to your ultimate uh, local destination, uh, just give yourself enough time. You know what I mean? In case there's weather or flight delays, you don't want to cut it too close. Uh, the, the Philippine Airlines, Cebu Pacific, they seem to be okay. Um, you know, if there's a problem, a weather delay or something like that. Um, but yeah, you can save some money doing it that way. And also for the hotel booking, if you choose not to do the package deal, like I was talking at the beginning of the video, you can uh, go on Agoda, Hotels.com, Booking.com, uh, one of those, and, and you can probably save some money if you book the hotel separately through there. So, uh, you know, so if you're looking to save and you're uh, internet savvy, uh, you can do it all like that. Or you can just, you know, pay a little more and do the whole package through Expedia or Travelocity, somebody like that. So let's talk about costs for uh, international travel. What did it cost me? All right, so I went from uh, Newark Liberty in 2016. Uh, I flew out to, eventually I made it to Iloilo City. Um to meet my fiance and uh, it as I said I used the travel agent and I got an amazing now this was just the flights this was all the flights it was about a thousand bucks round trip and that included uh, it was uh, six flights total three going and three coming back it was Newark to Hong Kong hour and a half layover in Hong Kong then Hong Kong to Manila where I met my fiance and then we flew together from Manila to Iloilo. And then coming back, uh, same thing. Uh, unfortunately, I had to leave her in Manila and I had to go on my way. Uh, but going back was uh, Manila, uh, Iloilo to Manila, Manila to Taipei, Taiwan. And then I flew back to uh, uh, New York. Actually, I flew back to uh, JFK uh, on the return flight. Uh, that's a whole other story. That's because I missed... I screwed up the flight. But anyway, getting back to the cost. So that cost about, it was under a, just under a thousand bucks, which I thought was amazing. Now, I looked up our last trip that my wife and I made in 2019, and this included uh, two weeks in the Grand Jean Hotel in Iloilo, uh, all the air travel. Um, so you're talking two weeks in the hotel, all the air travel from the U.S. It was direct flight from JFK, New York to Manila. And then we had our uh, uh, flight from Manila to Iloilo um, and back the other way when we came back home. So uh, that one with the hotel, two of us, was uh, just under $2,700. So that's that, those were the costs. Um, I would say one person... Um, you know, as I was saying about, uh, you know, whether you use Expedia and Travelocity and do a package deal or um, do uh, uh, piecemeal and, and book your international flight, then, then book your domestic flight and then book your, um, your hotel on one of the other sites that I mentioned, um, Agoda, Hotels.com, uh, uh, you know, sites like that, Booking.com. 
you'll probably save you could probably shave close to a thousand bucks if it's uh, for two I know I, I've been crunching the numbers for when things open up and uh, I was able to by doing that compared to the package deal I was able to save just about a thousand uh, so you can see uh, how you can save if you can do it that way um, so those are the costs involved uh, with it just and again it might be different for you I don't know you might be in Canada uh, you might be in another Western country uh, you might be in Australia if you're in Australian it's gonna be a heck of a lot cheaper because you're on that side of the world already so you gotta you know think about that don't let the cost scare you either um, it's doable it's totally doable all right so just to recap guys first time international traveling no passport uh, here's what you gotta do get your passport that's number one right now things seem to be delayed because of the pandemic it takes longer do it now do it now get it done because probably not going to be traveling um uh, in, in until next year so go do it get it done uh check out the post office like i said uh i know our courthouse in our county gets it does it there too get it done just just do it this way you have it and it's good for 10 years you know so you're good to go uh the next thing um you know research do your research. Check out Travelocity, Expedia. Run the numbers. Check the pack, the packages. Research the location. Where are you going? All right. Where, where, where's your girl? You know, where's she located? Check out. Use Google Earth. Google Earth is wonderful. I was able to check out where I was going and uh, be like I was there on the ground and see what it looked like. Also, huge thing. Airports. If you're going to do connecting flights, there's YouTubers that do a great service and they show what it's like in the airports. So when you land in a connecting country, you're in a connecting flight and you're uh, transitioning through another country and you got to you know go through the airport, check out these videos. They're great. That's what I did. At least I had an idea what the airport looked like, what it's going to be like. It's still, you know, there was still times where I got a little confused, but I definitely, it helped, it helped me a lot to, uh, to do that. I mean, I even did that with JFK because I, I don't fly out of JFK. I'm, I live in the New York area, but I don't take a lot of trips out of JFK, especially international. So I checked it all out beforehand. And uh, this way, when I got there, I had an idea what, what it looked like, where I had to go. And it was just like I had been there uh, myself the day before. Uh, so that's that's an awesome thing. And uh, big thanks for uh, YouTubers that do that because it, it helps a lot. Uh, so research, uh, research, research. Location, the airports, um, the hotels. You know, check out the hotels. Don't, don't, you know, if you can't afford it, there's some really great hotels in the Philippines. You don't have to go to the Marriott and spend top dollar unless you can afford it. I mean, if you can afford it, you can stay at the Marriott. If they have a Marriott where you're going and you can afford it, man, stay there. It's just like being in a Western uh, hotel. It's it, The Marriott in Ilorilo City is, is uh, awesome. It's a beautiful hotel, but it's a little expensive. So I, I opted not to do the, the Marriott. Um, so, you know, passport, research, and crunch the numbers, all right? And uh, don't let it intimidate you. Just one hurdle at a time. You can do it. I did it. I never thought I would do something like that, believe me. Um, but you know what? I did it late in life, late in my 40s. I did it. I've been there and back. Going on five years marriage this year with my wife. And uh, it's a good thing. And you can do it, too do it get on the plane it'll be the biggest best adventure of your life you'll be glad you did it and you'll have memories for a lifetime uh and you'll fall if you're going to the philippines you'll fall in love with the philippines like i did uh it's a wonderful place so uh hey you guys have any questions comments uh i'm here to help i'm happy to help just leave them in the comments below and uh I'll be glad to answer you and uh, help you out because um, sooner or later, things are going to open up again and you'll be able to see your lady. All right. 
So uh, thanks for stopping by. Again, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, smash that like button, as they say, and hit that bell so you get all the notifications for our upcoming videos. Uh, we'd appreciate it. And uh, take care. God bless, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.